you all are doing well. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning. John, am I on? There we go. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to John chapter 14. We're continuing in our series of the I Am Statements of Jesus. And uh, today we're going to look at I Am the Way, the Truth, and the Life. In John chapter 14, we'll begin reading in verse 1 this morning. We'll read in verse 6. Jesus is speaking here, and he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, so how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's pray together. Lord, again, we come seeking, Father, your face, seeking your wisdom. Father, seeking your presence. And God, I pray this morning as the Holy Spirit just moves in our life, God, that we just uh, learn from you, Father. We continue to grow. We thank you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys, if we were to go back and look back into chapter 13, we'll see there where Jesus is preparing the disciples for his departure there in chapter 13. So, for instance, we see back over there the last Passover before his death. We see Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, teaching them about servanthood before he leaves. And we see him also breaking bread together. And we, and we also see him revealing his coming betrayal. You know, somebody's going to betray him, right, before, before this evening's over with. But then we come to chapter 14 here, and we see this beautiful promise of heaven. Y'all, what a beautiful promise. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Somebody might need to hear that today. Amen? Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. I mean, things going on all around us in this world, I mean, it can trouble our hearts a lot of times, can it? It really can. But Jesus is wanting to assure you, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Again, he's saying, me and the Father are the same, by the way. You know, he said that over and over in our series and stuff. And, and as we think about that, uh, I, I want us to, to, to realize that, that Thomas comes in here and he says, how can we know the way? You know, that's a good question for all of us this morning, right? Amen. How can we know the way? And Jesus answered his question there in verse 6. Again, it says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So let's talk about that a little bit this morning. What is Jesus saying? Well, we, we clearly, clearly learn here, first of all, that Jesus is the way to heaven. I want you to think about that for a moment. I mean, if I wanted to go to Baton Rouge today, see one of them LSU football games that everybody likes to go see and stuff, I mean, I could go a lot of different ways, right? Man, I could drive all the way to Jackson to I-55, go down, hit 12, and cut back across to Baton Rouge. No problem at all. A little out of my way. I, I could take the little shortcut through Utica and cut some of that off, couldn't I? Get down to Baton Rouge with no problem. If I didn't want to go that far, I could turn off at Rayville, man, take the back roads and all the farmland, go down through Winsboro and up through Ferret and Vidalia, hit Natchez and head south on 61, right? 
I'm going to end up right there and back. Even get to see that good looking town called St. Francis. You know, all those antebellum homes and things like that down there. You know, that'd be a good route to take, wouldn't it? You know, and, hey, if I wanted to, I could just go hit 65 and then 165 and head straight down, right? And end up right there, just a straight shot. You know, many of you folks would leave from here and you would probably go down and hit 34 and y'all would head down to, to Winfield and get on 167 and go on down to Alexandria that way and then straight on into Baton Rouge, right? Look, if you wanted to get crazy, you could drive all the way to Shreveport, hit I-49 and go down to Alexandria and end up in Baton Rouge, couldn't you? So many different ways that you could go. I want you to notice here. It's not, I will show you the way. That's not what he said. I will show you the way. It's not, here is the way. You see, brothers and sisters, you cannot follow Jesus to heaven. Now, that's a profound statement. Some of y'all's alert just went straight up, right? What do you mean, preacher? You can't follow Jesus to heaven. You can't. Here's what I mean by that, just for example. Jesus was baptized. You can follow Jesus and be baptized. But do you know that you can be baptized and be lost? Jesus loved people. But you can love people and be lost. Jesus, he was a man of prayer. Do you know you can pray every day and be lost? And on your way to hell? I mean, do y'all remember Matthew chapter 7? Man, here were some guys doing the right thing, but Jesus called them false prophets in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23. What did he say to them? This is his words. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. In other words, you know, they're going to address him as Lord. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name has cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work. There's a lot of places we can go and we can take different routes. <clears throat> but you guys, salvation comes only through faith in Christ. You can't fall in there with good works. You can only get there by being in Christ. Putting your faith and your faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. That's one of my old Sunday school teachers used to say years ago, Brother George Delamar. Plus or minus nothing else. It's by faith in Jesus and Him alone and His finished work at the cross of Calvary. That is the only thing that satisfied God for the punishment of your sins. You can't be good enough. You can't work hard enough. It's only through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for you and me that we're going to make it into heaven. You see, His heaven is perfect, right? We are imperfect. How can our per imperfection get into his perfect place? It's only by our sins being covered by the blood of Jesus. And how does that happen? It's us stepping out by faith, putting our trust in him and him alone as Lord over our life. Lord, I can't do it. I'm a sinner. But I understand what you did on the cross of Calvary that day satisfied God for my sin. 
So I'm going to choose to put all my trust. That's what it means to believe in him. To put all your trust in him and him alone for your way to heaven. Have you done that, brothers and sisters? You cannot follow Jesus to heaven. Salvation comes through faith in Christ. When you look at John 3.16 up there, you're familiar with it. For sure, this next, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in who? In him. In, him, in Jesus should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at the next one here in John. Six, I mean, Acts 16, 31, excuse me. And they said, believe on who? The Lord, Jesus. the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy household. It, aren't you glad he not only wants to save you, but he wants to save your whole house too? Isn't that beautiful? Look at one more here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through what? Amen. Through faith. And we know that through faith in who? Jesus. Jesus. It's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. You can never earn it. All you can do to receive a gift is what? Receive it. Reach out. Take it. Accept it. Trust that he'll give it to you. Trust how? By faith. It's all by faith. Brothers and sisters, and uh, let's look at one more here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by what? Faith. Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be right with God the Father, you come to Jesus Christ the Son and turn your life over to Him by faith and faith alone. So Jesus is the only way to heaven. You don't have different routes, folks, to get there. It's only through him. You can't go around him. You can't go under him. You can't go over him. You've got to go through him to get to heaven. It's by me, he said. And then next, Jesus is not only the way to heaven. Jesus is the source of truth about heaven. He's the source of truth about heaven. He said, I am the way and the truth. Listen, there are many eras about heaven out there. Some think heaven's on earth. Oh, gosh, help us if it is. Amen? Amen. Oh, my goodness. You know, you might convince me sometimes that hell is on earth. But, but, but heaven on earth. The Bible clearly states in that day a new heaven and a new earth will come down. Amen? will come down. A new heaven and a new earth. So if heaven's on earth, why is a new heaven coming out, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, some think that. Some think that only 144,000 are going to go to heaven. What? That's exactly what the, 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 the folks in the Jehovah Witness believe. That's why the little boys are out working so hard with their pretty little ties on riding their bicycles. Now listen, I'm not criticizing those guys. I wish the Baptist church had as much worth ethic as they did. Amen. Lord knows what this world we can do in this world if we had their work ethic. But the, the sad part about that is that they're not trying to get there on grace by their faith in Jesus Christ. They're trying to work their way to heaven, folks, is what they're trying to do. They're trying to be one of the 144,000. And I'm talking about from A.D. 33 when Jesus died all the way up to now. They believe only 144,000. You know, it's mentioned in Revelation, the 144,000 witnesses that are going to be out there. And they're all fighting trying to be one of those. Can you imagine of the billions and billions and billions of people Fighting to be a hundred, one of the 144,000. But some think that, that that's all that's going to go to heaven. Some think that heaven is just a state of mind. I want to encourage you to see what Jesus says about heaven. You know what Jesus says about heaven? Jesus says heaven is a place, not a state of mind, folks. Again, 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a real place. Y'all, I'm telling you, heaven is as real as Monroe, Louisiana. It is a real place. And heaven is a prepared place. Did you catch that in verse 2? He's there preparing a place for you. Heaven is a real place and it's prepared for you and I who have trusted in Christ as Lord and Savior. In other words, heaven is where Christians go at death. I mean, what did he say in verse 3? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. First of all, when this old body goes into the ground, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, our spirit goes to be with the Lord. The Apostle Paul clearly stated, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, he's talking about Christians, those that are in Christ. Okay? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Our spirit will be with the Lord. But on that day when Jesus steps on the clouds of glory at Thessalonians and the trump of God's going to sound, and he steps out on the clouds, it says then the dead in Christ are going to rise, right? The dead in who? In Christ. In Christ. Those that have surrendered their life to Christ and accepted him by faith. Those people are going to rise up and be called up to be with him in the air, the Bible says. And then when we, if, if we are still alive and remain, it says we'll follow them up and be caught up in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, it says. That's long. Wow. Heaven is a prepared place. Heaven is where Christians go at death. And heaven is where Jesus will take us when he comes back, according to verse 3. In Thessalonians. Listen. We can depend on the words that Jesus gave us about heaven. That's all I'm saying this morning. Jesus is the source of truth about heaven. Don't believe, the, don't, you don't even have to believe the preacher. Don't believe mom and daddy. Don't believe your friend down the road. Get in the word and see what Jesus says about heaven. Because he is the source of truth about it. And he will tell you straight up what heaven is about and what hell is about. Also, Jesus is a source of life that continues in heaven. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, he says. Look at some of these passages right here. In him, in John chapter 1 verse 4, was life. And the life was the life of men. In him, who was him? Jesus, right? And Jesus was like, look at the next one here. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I think we got another one here. John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Wow. When we believe <coughs> in Jesus Christ, the Bible says before then that our, our spirit inside of us is dead. But when we choose to believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit moves into us and quickens or makes alive our spirit. And listen, that's why the Bible says sometimes when you read this book and stuff, you don't understand what you read. It's because your spirit is dead inside. And then when the Holy Spirit comes in, it brings you to life and things are all of a sudden opened up to you and revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Life begins to flow through you and I. But then 
as we die, our bodies are put back in the ground. Guess what? We're going to be raised to everlasting life. So we get to experience life here and now. Jesus called it abundant life. You know? Here and now, but we get to experience everlasting life that begins at salvation and we experience it in heaven with him for all eternity. And so he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the resurrection and the life. True life, abundant life is in Jesus. <clears throat> hey, do y'all realize this morning that life is precious? Amen. And, and I almost hate that I have to ask that question today. But I feel like I even have to ask that question today because of the loss of this truth in our time. There's no respect for life in our world anymore, it seems like. You think about the abortion problem, the assisted suicide problem, euthanasia and things like that. But I am telling you, each moment in life is precious. I have been extremely blessed today. My sweet mother-in-law is here. And I know it kills her that her health has gotten down. We've been all praying for her here in this church. But you want to know somebody that thinks life is precious? That's it right there. Unfortunately, you got a 40-year-old heart trapped in an 83-year-old body, right? <laughs> you didn't have to say that. <laughs> I created the cardinal sin. I told the raise to me. <clears throat> Mr. Bud, life is precious, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's quick, too. It's quick. We talked about that last week. It's quick. But it's precious. And only Jesus provides life that lasts forever. And I pray you want that for yourself. The world's never going to give it to you, I promise you. They're trying to take it from you every day. But my Savior Jesus Christ will give it to you. He's the source of life. That continues in heaven. And so in summary, just real quick this morning. Number one, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Number two, Jesus reveals the truth about heaven. And number three, Jesus gives life that continues in heaven. So today, here's what I'm asking of you. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart right at this moment. And you know it if he is or if he isn't, and you know it's for a reason. So here's what I want to challenge you to do today. As the Holy Spirit leads you, will you come in faith to Jesus and be sure of heaven this morning? He said in 1 John chapter verse 13, I write these things so you may know that you have eternal life. He don't want you to have to guess about it. He don't want, to have, he don't want you to have to question it. He wants you to know 100% sure whether or not you have a home in heaven. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we kneel before your throne of grace at this time of invitation our opportunity that you give us to respond to your message. And so, Father, today as your Holy Spirit has spoken, Father, as you are ministering to hearts all over this building today, Father, I know it's your prayer and it's my prayer as well that if there's any in our midst, Father, within the sound of my voice who doesn't know you as personal Lord and Savior of their life, Father, uh, there may be some here today who say, Brother Jeff, I'm not 100% certain if I were to die today that I would have a prepared home in heaven. Father, I pray today that they will settle that before it's everlasting too late and walk out of here in freedom, walk out of here in your grace, and walk out of here, Father, with renewed life. 
that your Holy Spirit wants to bring. And Father, we just trust you with that this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.